In this video, I'm going to be talking about elastic collisions versus inelastic collisions. What are the differences between them and how do you solve for them? The way you solve for each one of these types of collisions is actually pretty similar, but there are some major conceptual differences between the two that you want to be aware of. So for the most part, these types of collisions are solved for by the conservation of momentum, which is basically telling you the total momentum before the collision equals the total momentum after the collision. So since momentum is represented by P, so P the, um, is representative of momentum, the total before the collision equals the total amount after the collision. So really that idea is like the driving idea that allows you to solve for different things like masses or velocities. Okay, now oftentimes inelastic collisions are defined by um, two objects that stick together, which is um, known as a perfectly inelastic collision. And then elastic collisions are often defined by uh, two objects that separate from one another. So that is a definition that a lot of teachers may use depending on the depth they want to get into. Um, so that works, but that's not technically 100% correct. It really has to do with the amount of kinetic energy before and after the collision. So in an actual inelastic collision, they don't necessarily have to stick together. It's just the total amount of kinetic energy before the collision is greater than the total amount of kinetic energy after. So we'll call this the initial, and then we'll call this the final. So during these types of collisions, um, there's thermal energy and sound energy that occur at the time of the collision. And then therefore there is less kinetic energy after the collision. Now with a elastic, Now with an elastic collision, the total amount of kinetic energy initially before the collision equals the total amount of kinetic energy after the collision. So if you really wanna identify if it is truly an inelastic or an elastic collision, you have to solve for the kinetic energy of each object before and after the collision and sum them up to see if they're equal to one another. So let's go ahead and solve this problem over here, which would be, um, what is the velocity of the two kilogram object? And then we're also going to prove whether it is inelastic or elastic. So we're gonna go back to the conservation of momentum in order to solve for my unknown velocity right here. So I'm gonna find the momentum of both the objects before the collision, and then set it up for both the objects after the collision, and then solve for this unknown V. Okay, so when solving one of these problems, the first thing you wanna do is actually draw a picture. Um, I already had my diagrams um, pre-made, um, but you definitely wanna draw a diagram similar to this one in your before column, and then one similar to this one in your after column. That way you can more easily identify where your negatives are gonna come into play. So your masses aren't gonna be negative, 
and your velocities may possibly be negative. The general rule of thumb I use is that anything that's going to the left is negative. Okay, so for positive and negative, they're just showing that they're in opposite directions. So the general rule that I use is that everything going to the right is positive and then everything going to the left is negative. So I made this two negative and this one negative as shown right here and right here. So I went through, I did the algebra, it was three plus negative four, which is negative one. And then that equals negative three plus two VF. And then I added the three to both sides. So I added that three to that negative one, which made it two, two equals two times VF, divide both sides by two. And my VF came out to a nice um, one meters per second. Okay, so that tells us two things about this two kilogram object. It tells us number one, it's traveling at a rate of one meter per second. And number two, because it naturally came out positive, that would tell me that the object bounced this way at one meter per second, because that was my positive direction. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna use our kinetic energy formula, which is one half mv squared. And then I'm going to solve for the kinetic energy for both of the objects before, both of the objects after, and see if it turns out to be an inelastic or elastic collision. All right, so I set up my kinetic energies. These are both of the objects before the collision and I ran out of room a little bit, but here's both of my objects after the collision. So if I go ahead and work those out, it comes out to 1.5 joules plus four joules equals 1.5 joules plus one joule. Okay, so over on the left side, I have 5.5 joules. Over here, I have 2.5 joules, which are clearly not equal. This one is greater. So at some point during the collision, because of the sound and thermal energy being created, I lost some of my kinetic energy shown um, over here on the right side of my equal sign. So if you're solving for an elastic or inelastic collision type problem, the process is all the same. You take the momentum MV of both objects before the collision and after the collision, being very careful about drawing your diagram and including negatives where the velocity, where they belong. As I said, I use um, everything to the right as positive and then everything to the left as negative as my rule of thumb to follow for my diagrams. And then from there, you can go ahead and solve for your unknown variable. Now, if they happen to stick together like this, the only thing that's different is that you are able to combine both of these momenta together. So instead of saying it's a three kilogram object and a two kilogram object, you can call it 5V and just say it's like one big five kilogram object moving with a certain velocity. Other than that, the process is still the same the way that you solve for it. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions and how to solve for different variables. Thank you for watching and listening.